Welcome, Jason Michelle here at Echo Nesters. Thank you for subscribing to our channel if you've done that, or just thank you for showing up and watching with us. What we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna give you a little tour of Bad Betty, the 2022 Winnebago Echo, built on a Ford all-wheel drive transit chassis. I'm gonna do my best to talk briefly about the sections because I know a lot of you folks that either own one, considered one, etc. You have a lot of this information already. But as we go through it, I'm gonna kind of touch on some of the things that I think that could be different and or better, just in case you don't currently own one. And if you do, you'll catch on to what I'm saying anyway. So let's start with the cab. Come on up. So this is the Ford cab, pretty standard. Manual seats, lumbar adjustment, seat moves, tilts up and down, pretty basic. Ergonomic controls here at the steering wheel. A lot of the stuff we all know and we can research. Pretty decent dash assembly here, like the touch screen. The 2022 is built like this, 2023 is a little larger. This is our climate control section. We've got USB plugs, 12 volt plugs, and an insane amount of cup holders. Cup holder, cup holder, cup holder, maybe a cup holder, cup holder, cup holder, cup holder, cup holder. Are you guys getting tired yet? <laughs> so, lots of cup holders, more USB ports. Another 12 volt plug. Lots of cool little cubbies and storage here. Little change or pen and pencil area. Again, just very comfortable. I think I was uh, gonna share something with you. We've got an armrest here, but I really dig this part. I tend to do this when I'm just kind of sitting, thinking, hanging out, watching stuff. This is the way I lean. I love how generous this door panel is for just this reason. Now catch on to that because we're going to talk about why I don't like it here in a moment. So anyway, we love it. There's lots of cubbies up here, typical sun visors. Now what you probably notice right here is something that either you don't have or maybe you do. Maybe you've tapped into our description and found this and went to one of our associate links and picked it up. But this is our RF controlled, radio frequency controlled switch panel that operates our auxiliary lights. We did not have to run any wires through the dash. It's been working excellent. So that's something that's added on. You'll also notice as we step back through the cab, there's a little bit of a ceiling here and there's somewhat of an interruption here with the JBL speaker. So as you come up, you probably wanna make sure that you're careful not to hit your head. You'll probably do that two or three times, then you'll be a creature of habit and it won't happen anymore. So as we're talking about the front here and we just briefly went over some stuff and you, again, you can check this out. One of the things that's pretty awesome is that these have swivel seats. You can spin around, hang out with the folks back here at the dinette. You can turn both chairs around. You get four adults or a multitude of people, whatever ages, and you can enjoy the space together, right? Sounds great. Now, before I step into the dinette area and we move on to that section, let's talk about these swivel seats because most people do not mention this. Let's go ahead and demonstrate it here. I'm gonna step out for a moment just so Michelle, for those that don't know, can show everyone where the lever is. So this little yellow lever that you see down here, when you pull it away, it allows the seat to release and spin. Pretty straightforward. All right, I'm gonna step back in here. I'm gonna try to make this quick, y'all, but I think you're gonna get this if you don't already know. So let's go ahead and move our seat up away from our lagoon table here, or not our lagoon table, our dinette table. And let's just assume that, hey, we wanna spin around, enjoy a meal, play some card games, whatever. We go to turn the seat. Oh my goodness, it's hitting something there. Okay, well, maybe if I move the chair up a little more. No, nope, it's still hitting my favorite door panel. Maybe if I move it back. Well, guess what? With all that racket noise and banging around, this seat is not gonna pivot. Why? Because it's hitting the door panel. So no matter what you think, unless you know something that the rest of the world doesn't know, in order to do this, we're stepping back out into the elements. What am I gonna do? Release the handle spin my seat around, go ahead and uh, lean in here, make my adjustment just so I can get back inside. Hopefully it's not just dumping down with all the snow and the rain or I'm not barbecuing myself in the sun. And I'm gonna go ahead and get back in here. Now, the door is gonna close. Now we possibly could have reached around this way, opened the door and done the same thing. I don't think either one's exaggerated. It's the cold hard truth. This seat and that seat are not gonna spin around without opening this door. So if you haven't purchased one and that bothers you, you're gonna have to get over it. So, all right, we're gonna kind of close up there again. You can kind of take a look here. 
and I'm going to bring you into the dining area. So I'm going to trade Michelle some places here, and we're going to be right back with you. Stay tuned. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Michelle pointed something out to me that I forgot to mention. Come on up. Little dot right there. And you'll notice that there's one right here. And it looks like it has a vehicle and another vehicle approaching it. And it's the blind spot monitoring system. Those do not work. If you have one that works, hit the thumbs up 100%, leave a comment, whatever, and tell me what you got going on because the rest of us, they just don't work. Those have been a problem on these vehicles. That is not a Ford issue. That is a Winnebago issue. <clears throat> I can tell you who makes the product. Um, we won't get into that now. They're actually a really good manufacturer and we'll get into why they don't work later. But those are your blind spot monitoring systems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mosey up here to the dinette area and we're gonna talk about this. So stay tuned as I get comfortable. We are now in the, I'm gonna call it the dining area, the dinette section of the Winnebago Echo. And as you can see, you got a beautiful window here. Lots of visibility. Opens up, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, can lock into place. We have a bug screen, very easy to use, and a privacy screen. And to release the window, you lift all the way up. Sometimes, that's another thing we'll talk about. But it typically works. It's pretty easy to manage the times that it gives you a little difficulty. You also notice that you have, I, I think this table's actually pretty good size, at least for two people, maybe three, pretty good size. But I think what you're probably looking at is these cup holders and wondering why yours didn't come with it. Well, these are bad Betty cup holders. We'll tell you how to get that too. But the reality is there are no cup holders. So that was something that really bothered me because let's just say you're having a meal or you happen to be stationary here, seat belted down and you're doing some work Why uh, your significant other, your partner, your husband, your wife, whoever is driving and this thing's gonna go all over the place and spill. So we have some bad heavy cup holders. The reason I'm releasing them right now is so that you can see how quick and easy that is. They accommodate all kinds of coffee cups and mugs, etc. We'll do a commercial on that later. So we've got the table here. I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate how easy this table is to raise and lower. So it's in the upright position, obviously, and you can see where my hand is. I just kind of release that little left, table goes down lots of space here we tend to drive with it up just uh, creatures that have it that way no particular reason no pros or cons to that per se and to re-engage it it's that simple so I'm just gonna put my bad baby cup holders back real quick while I'm chatting with you so the other thing that you'll notice is that we have a really generous size cupboard up here I'm gonna swing around here and talk a little bit about this there are some pros and cons to this. The pros are, it's quite large, it's stable. It's pretty good looking, easy release. A couple magnetic catches, lock in really, really strong. I wish I had one of those sound buttons where it goes eh, cause that is a con, let me tell you why. That's a lot of pressure and, uh, to pull those down. If you have one, sorry about the slamming, you know what that's like. We've already had how many rip out of the ceiling? two of these rip out of the ceiling and once they come out they don't go back in so let's talk about this nice generous size cover size squeaky hinges you look inside here got all kinds of things going on olive oil and some noodles and some almonds etc but you might also notice that it's a mess it's not well it's organized but it's not really organized and stuff can kind of move around you might also notice that we use these nice little bamboo extenders and uh, I like them they work well but this is not a permanent solution there are lots of options out there for organizing this Michelle and I actually have some products that we're creating that are gonna help organize this in the near future I'm in the construction trade so I got a little access to some things but we'll talk more about that later that's a fun treat to look forward to the other thing that you'll notice is that you've got plenty of power up here 12 volt USB and you've got some 110 power. And the same thing is over here. Additional lighting, very simple. Good cubbies here. We keep our thermal blanket in this one. The thermal blanket is the part that covers here. It's a little drafty and cold out. It controls temperature. We also keep our little condensation equipment up here, anti-condensation equipment up here, dog leash, etc. This side, this is where Bad Betty houses her disco light. 
you should know about Bad Betty's Disco Light. <laughs> if you don't know, you need to know. Okay, so there's Bad Betty's Disco Light. And we've got a basket, some board games, etc. If I bring you up into here, though, what's kind of nice is there are some auxiliary plugs. There's also some ports for antenna, but I'm going to push this one right, get my eye on it, right here. That's an antenna booster button. If you were not aware of that, you, you are now. They have a Sony DVD player right here, and you'll notice that would obviously come if you got the entertainment package. Let's talk a little bit about that really quick. Michelle and I love the JBL Bluetooth soundbar. This thing cranks and sounds awesome. The sound system alone is pretty phenomenal in here. The TV's decent. However, it's about this good. That's it. If you're back there in the bed, you darn well better figure out how either you're going to lay right in the middle or you're going to tuck your head over. We're going to talk more about that later. We don't tend to use our TV that much. We've attempted to watch a movie a couple times and it was more annoying. There's obviously some solutions to that. So if you haven't purchased one, you're considering the entertainment package, Bluetooth speaker, if you could just get that, it's awesome. I don't know, the TV's plus minus, I'll let you decide. I'm gonna swing you over here and we're gonna talk about some of the controls here. We got our Xantrex right here. I'm not gonna obviously push that, but that controls the inverter. And then we've got some stuff that has to do with the charge controller for the solar equipment. And we're not gonna get too much in that. And then you have your main control panel, gives you a little indication how your coach batteries are doing. The other thing that it'll tell you is what your tank levels are, fresh water, gray water. You can start your generator from here and you can kick your water pump on and off from here. So this is pretty convenient. I like it. I don't have anything to say that's not positive about that. The other thing you'll notice is you have a pretty decent screen door. Lots of double locking systems on here. Um, works pretty well. No complaints there. Typically, there's uh, what we're going to call a lagoon table here. Slides right in, mounts, you lift it up, you swivel it. In case you're sitting here, it's very convenient. Or you can swing it over here and it can double as a secondary counter for cooking. It just did nothing for me, so I took it out. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like, and I lost it. I don't know where it's at. It can't be missing, but it's gone. So at any rate, they don't come with key holders. You can pick those up. They're free, and they're pretty simple. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward up here. Some speakers, some lighting, some track. Now let's move over to the kitchen. I'm going to just swing over here, and you'll notice that it's kind of pretty much a galley kitchen. you got your stainless steel sink. Faucet right here. Obviously, we had some air in the line because we just kicked it on and off. You've got your dual propane uh, suburban heater. I'm sorry, not heater. Uh, cooktop here. You've got some cupboards, obviously, underneath the sink. Water filters in there as well. And, of course, there's a couple of drawers. They made this one a little stubby because of the P-trap. We can talk more about some mods on that later. This one's a little more generous, but they're not soft closing or anything special but they do what they're supposed to do. You also notice that you have a microwave. We love our microwave. This thing kicks butt. I had no idea how much we would use this, but we do. Now, let's say you're a person that doesn't enjoy microwaves, don't want to cook. You take these four screws out, you open up this cupboard right here. You unplug your microwave right there. You remove it, and guess what? You can build out a cabinet in there and pick up some more storage. It's that simple. Nothing's hardwired there. So just a little tip for that. We added a magnetic bar here. It holds some spices and some uh, cutlery, if you will. Everything's pretty straightforward there. Again, typical window open, just like the dinette side. We have a screen here, etc. Some additional lighting off 12 volt. And that kind of makes up the kitchen. Now I crashed through that. I'm actually come around here. Let's let's show them. Besides the cockapoo here, we got a movie for a second. You have a little pantry. Now, your pantry will house whatever you think it should. We keep a French press, a little blender in there. Some of our Jameson friends, sorry. Um, we've got some seasoning, and you can add adult beverages in there, or you don't have to, whatever you choose. Um, and then you've got a fridge. Actually, we should talk about the fridge. I love the fridge. Mm -hmm. This is a real fridge. It's ergonomically friendly. It's, it's pretty deep. High, like you. you yes, yes. And you've got 
right here, some controls. You can tune it down based, I had it cranked up pretty solid there. I probably should turn it down to about three. Freezer, let's just see what we got. I wanna show you guys the depth of this. Fries, we can make some rosemary fries. Yes, we got two pizzas in here for our trail fire, right there, the Trader Joe's pizzas. And these are just little uh, sauces. We can talk more about that later. But that is a very generous freezer. And I could keep stacking stuff in there. So basically you can see that this refrigerator is pretty awesome. I love it. And it works well. You've got a drawer. You can keep your sodas, drinks, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing too fancy in here. Uh, I'm traveling light right now. It does lock into place, which is nice. Part, in the, part of the kitchen area, I might as well just touch on here. Just so you know, below your refrigerator is where you have some main breakers, some fuses. They're pretty well labeled. And I'm going to go ahead and close that back up. So that is more or less your kitchen. Obviously, you've got some heat right here, some additional plugs. But it's, it's laid out pretty well. Um, this particular cupboard is much like that cupboard. Magnetic catch and quite annoying meaning from an organization standpoint and having things not fly around because sometimes we've opened this and stuff has come flying at us and you can find these in the description came across those love them so before we move on to the bathroom uh do you have any questions <laughs> i'm just kidding so uh, well no, i'm not kidding you put them in the comments oh let's talk about what was this thing michelle uh what is this called flying you, w flying w yeah Flying W. We yeah, just learned hooks. that. Yeah, they're um, cool. Well, I don't, One in I don't the bathroom. Know I thought that was cool the other day. She gave it a name and I mm, spaced it off. Hurt. Smoke detectors, etc. etc. Oh, we love where the sink is. Oh yeah. So a lot of folks are doing some mods and they're kind of cool. You they'll take the sink, they'll swap it with the burner, or they do induction ovens if they feel like they've got enough onboard power, which these have quite a bit of power. I at first really heavily considered that mod. And then I'm going to let Michelle fill in the blank. Um, well, maybe, maybe not. Oh, you, she you go for it. Just okay. keep going. All right. So at any rate. <laughs> no, I, I love where the sink is. Well, I love coming in and out and having the sink right here. It's convenient for me. It is. And tell them why the one thing you did point out, if you will, that convinced me primarily why I would not want my stove there. Safety? Safety. People just Kate. come on in. This and... is how Jason <laughs> operates. Jason's a little chaotic, yeah. right? I locked myself in, sorry. I come on in, and I don't always grab this bar, but I tend to do this, yeah. or I tend to go like this. And if Michelle was cooking something, I'm either going to knock it over, or I'm going to burn myself. Sorry about the loud impact there on the ears. So when she pointed that out, I was like, you know what, you're right. But at first, because I'm like all about mods and we can do anything, I was going to rearrange the whole place. But it doesn't make sense for us. But if it does for you, take it on. I just know that I would hurt myself. So we're going to go ahead and let Michelle take over on the bathroom real quick. So I'll be right back with you. Hey there. Welcome to our shower tour. Let's start out here by clicking on this little switch that gives you light upon entering the shower bathroom. Uh, so let's start here. We have this cool little caddy we picked up that houses the shampoo, conditioner, little shampoo, soap, shavers, washcloths. And we picked up these 3M hooks that hold the full-size towels for us very nicely. Come around here and uh, yeah, check out this cool bamboo mat that does an awesome job at protecting our cook shower pan. Moving on up here, we have this Flying W cute little uh i'd call it a little hook and then some decent counter space lovely mirror good size to get ready in the morning and this is a lovely little accent window fresh air in the bathroom natural light cool little shades down more storage you never have enough of that with these awesome magnetic hooks more stuff you might need and of course the uh, toilet paper holder some outlets if you need to plug a blow dryer in or a curling iron and of course the amazing cassette toilet uh, it does a little swivel here for your convenience and comfort while you're doing your business um, we love our cassette toilet Jason has done an awesome video um, demonstrating a lot about it um so yes this 
part of the bathroom, it would be like the getting ready uh, the toilet part. And then you just kind of swivel this little thing yeah. and pivot. Voila, you have the shower. Look at this, perfect size. You have this little shower head, lots of pressure, heats up really fast. Little spots for your soap and whatnot. And you just kind of unhook this, swivel this around. And you have a little, <laughs> little curtain business here. And you come on down here and we have this cool little, uh, I'm going to call it a shower curb Jason put in. It's done an amazing job at keeping the water out from uh, this other little area protecting the floor. So, yes, this is the Winnebago shower bathroom combo. We love it. We just left off with the bathroom tour, one of our favorite places, so to speak, but it's one of the favorite features of the Echo. As we cascade back here, I like to use the word cascade into the sleeping quarters slash bedroom area, you'll notice that there are two bunks that you step up to. These bunks currently are twin beds, but because Winnebago was thinking that maybe folks want to sleep together or they might want to spread out more, they allowed it to become a much larger bed. This platform, if you will, it also doubles a cup holder, a place to put your change, your watch, just little nightly items. You just kind of pull back, you flip down, and once you flip it down, it just sets into place like that, and boom, you've got a pretty big bed. I would say it's probably about the equivalent of a king bed, so it does give you the flexibility and the option there, but that's not really where things just stop. So let's talk about some of the storage back here you might notice that we have a couple of cupboards. As we spoke about earlier, the two magnets that ripped out of the ceiling, you can see there, but the cupboards are pretty generous. They're good size. You've got some plugs, USB ports. This is kind of neat. This pops out. You can drop your cords down, charge your phones, or any other items that you need to keep plugged in. The other cupboard is pretty much identical. And again, if the magnets were in place, they would hold up and things would be nice. You'd also notice that there are a couple of, I'm going to call them reading lamps. So the way that these function is if you just click it on, you've got a little bit of a blue, um, I don't know if you want to call it ambient light. And then if you hold it in, you're back here to maybe a little bit more of a reading lamp. So that's kind of a nice little feature that Winnebago did just in case you didn't want full overhead lights on. The other thing that you'll notice here is the air conditioning unit. These are pretty loud. There are ways that you can dampen them down. We can talk more about that in another video, but it only reduces the decibels by, I want to say maybe three to five. I'd have to recheck that, but it's not enough that it's significant in my opinion, but some folks have claimed that it is. You also notice that Winnebago put a smoke detector. We have CO2 detectors as well. And I'll have Michelle pan around here they thought in the future that you may want to put a TV here. So they've got plug and they've got some antenna power. We haven't chose to do that yet. We've considered a screen projector, but again, we don't find ourselves watching a lot of TV, but those options exist for you. These vents here, I, I want to talk about this. When we were first picking up the Echo, uh, we purchased it sight unseen. They were very difficult to get. And when I saw these and I was watching other videos, I had reason to believe that this was part of the main Truma heating system and I was going to have heat coming out of these. Absolutely not. There is no heat back here to this bedroom space. That's kind of one of the, the things that probably could be different. I do have a mod coming in the future for that that I'll share with y'all, but you're gonna get your AC out of here, but you're not gonna get heat. I think maybe they were assuming that heat rises and you'll be comfortable, I don't know. The other thing that you'll notice is you have some windows. These two windows, I want you to take a peek here, are two different sizes, meaning this is the distance here, and there's the distance there to the ceiling. This is an emergency exit window. You have your typical privacy shade, and you also have what we'll call your screen, if you will, your bug screen. Now, some folks have talked about, Winnebago's made an improvement on the 2023s, but what I say is people have talked about that they get bugs through here and I think what they're talking about is just a little spacing that's between I'm gonna call it the fiberglass slash plastic housing we haven't experienced that yet but that doesn't mean it's not true it just maybe we've had a little bit more luck on that but if you have a 2023 you more than likely have a different shade system that was improved 
So my understanding is they are offering it for some folks on the 2022s that may be complaining enough. I don't know. The other thing that as you're looking at this is that we have these acrylic windows. I want to talk a little bit about these windows here. Yes, they are to some degree energy efficient. When I was reading and doing some research on it, I had the idea in my head that these were crazy energy efficient, but I discovered differently. They do get cold. And the other thing that I noticed is we were doing some winter camping. The sun had came out and I was laying over there on my side and the sun was coming in and I felt like it was a magnifying glass. So I'm considering actually having them tinted again, something that's gonna deflect, if you will, or at least cut down on some of the UV and the heat that transfers through those. So do not be fooled and think that these do not transfer heat and or cold, because they do. Now I told you earlier that this window was slightly raised and you noticed a little bit more wall here. The reason I'm talking about this is with any RV or van build out, you're gonna get condensation. We're all attempting to reduce it in different ways. Whether you leave the air, or sorry, the max air fan on about 10%, you crack a window, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes depending where you're camping, the time of year and the climate, those options aren't always the best. So a lot of folks have talked about getting cold and condensation along this wall. And the reason that they're claiming that is the bat wing awning on the outside, so on and so forth. However, I tend to believe that the reason that you don't experience as much over here on the passenger side is because there's not as much wall exposed. I do believe the bat wing has something to do with it, but not, I don't think it's the full thing. So do not be alarmed that if you do get moisture and condensation built up around here, we do have some uh, tips and tricks for that in some of our other videos, and we're still building upon that. I think I'm getting closer to some, I wouldn't call them 100% solutions, but some things that'll help out. Now, you might be wondering, where do you store your clothes? How does all that work? Well, you've got a couple of very generous drawers here, one on each side. And as you can see, I've got some t-shirts and just some sweatpants and miscellaneous here. Those are just extra travel gear. There's identical one right here. That's where Bad Betty keeps her extra license plate just for fun. And then you've got some closets here. Um, I'm gonna talk about this closet here for a moment because what's underneath, we'll move a few things out that we store. Right underneath here, if you were to lift that up, there's actually the water pump. There's also the water pump filter there, and that's where you would maintain things. Let's stay focused on this area for just a moment. Where that water pump is, there's an exterior wall right there. And I can tell you, if you lift up the little hatch and you look in there, you're gonna see some water lines and you're gonna see that that's pretty much a cold zone. That should have and could have been insulated differently. Now, if we come over here to, we'll call it what my side of the bed would be. My closet has a little pole. There's a little bit of plumbing action down there pretty basic and straightforward. There are a lot of mods that you can do to these. Um, we haven't found the perfect one for us, but again, we're working on a couple of things and once they're together, we'll share it with the rest of y'all. Now, as you're coming up the steps, I'm gonna have a shelf scoot back just for a moment. You'll notice that you have a little night light that's motion sensitive or activated. On the 2023 models, they put a secondary switch here so you could control that on and off because that was bothering people. And I can kind of see why, just a little bit of motion, it kicks on. But I want to share something a little bit more important here. So what we did, obviously we just took a really quick tour here. A lot of this information's online, other people have done it. But I want to show you something here. Besides the fact the mattress is insanely comfortable. These lift up, okay. Well, okay, that's great, Jason, lift up. I've seen that before. But let's talk about what's underneath this metal pan that's held in by about 10 screws around the perimeter. If you were to release this, you are going to find a whole lot of PEX plumbing lines, some uh, 90 degree fittings that are made out of plastic. And those all tie into what I'm gonna call uh, on the driver's side, where you have your exterior shower, where you do your drainage, your fill port, where all the controls are. The problem with that is it's completely exposed in some respect. What separates it is your two inch door that's quote unquote insulated and as part of the four season package, but you got a metal panel. That metal panel is contributing to conducting moisture and condensation. That area gets really cold. We had a cold snap in Portland not too long ago. And why I address this is I didn't get a chance to come out and fully drain the system. There was water left in the line. 
I came out, started working on it, and Bad Betty had sprung a leak. I've got that in another video. Now, on this side, opposite, I'm gonna move a little cockapoo here. We, this bed lifts up the same. Now, I'm not just doing this to demonstrate, wow, the bed lifts up, Jason. Why would you want need to show me that twice? But I'm actually showing you this for a completely different reason. Underneath this middle pan, right here, on the outside of that is where your Truma AquaGo water heater system is located. There are also additional plumbing lines that come off the back of that. So in the event that you didn't winterize properly or there was a cold snap and something had went wrong and you start to hear water or you've sprung a leak, know that those two metal pans can be removed. By the way, you do not have to remove the hydraulic arm or hinge. They made a nice little notch for it and you can access that part of the plumbing. It does make it convenient. I don't know if they intentionally planned for that or not, but let's say they did just for fun. So basically this is the bedroom. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty basic crazy comfortable um anybody that's laid in these we've actually let people come tour our echo pre-purchasing one because they couldn't get their hands on one look at one they were out of state and the first thing i tell them is go back there lay in our bed they feel like oh, are you sure i said yes just do it it's crazy comfortable i fall asleep better in here than my own bed at home um, i think they were genius in that so we love the bedroom it serves its purpose it's plenty it's got plenty of room i like how it's built up it's obviously built up because we have our rear garage outside. So that's the bedroom. I hope you enjoyed the mini tour of that. Again, I didn't want to go too much into detail because you probably know enough about this, but I wanted to point out some of the key things. The acrylic windows could be a little bit different, better insulated. Condensation on the wall, the two metal pans that can be removed to access some of the plumbing, and how there's lots of opportunity to build out the storage. So we're going to head over to another part. Come on over. So you might be wondering why I've got a flashlight or headlamp in my hand and why we're back in the dinette area. I told you we're gonna come back here for a reason. 2022 year model, flat panel. 2023, we'll have an inverter switch and a breaker right here. They moved the inverter from outside on the driver's side in the little compartment there to the inside of the coach. Those of you that have the 2023, you're lucky. It's awesome to have it there. They then took the gulper pump, which, what is the gulper pump? located under here and they moved it to the outside to access that on the 2022 models in the event that it's not working and you need to check the fuse just pop up your seat pull it out both operate that way you come in here you see that bright yellow pump right there that is the new upgrade after the recalls occurred and let's just say it's not working i'll give you a little tip here there is a inline fuse right there a 10 amp so check that first, but I want to let you know, 2022's gulper pump in here. What is the gulper pump? It is the pump that actually takes the water from the shower, also the sink, pumps it up to the holding tank because they're not gravity fed, and it's got a little sensor in there, and whenever it senses water, it pumps it up. I'll really quickly just let you hear what it sounds like, because it's gonna kick on. And our water's gonna go down. In a second here, it's going to go gently. There she is. Works great. Noisy, but works great. So we're going to head on outside with y'all. Thank you for joining us on the inside. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, ask in the comments. If you need to know anything that I've talked about tech-wise, just feel free to ask and do my best to answer. So we're going to head on out. Let's go. So we're going to close out the video this evening, just sitting here on this beautiful beach on the Oregon coast. And I think Shell and I just want to say thank you for those that have subscribed to our channel, do comments, thumbs up, all the fancy YouTube yeah. stuff. We're super grateful because you're taking time out of your day to watch us yeah, and sure. our cockapoo. And uh, so we close out the video with uh, Bad Betty here. We hope you enjoyed the tour. I think one of the things that we wanted to do a little different is not go methodically through everything. We wanted to touch bases on some of the things that we enjoy. A couple things maybe you do and don't couple, know about the seats. The corks. That's We've a good had way to it say forever, it. about a year now. Just almost and we're a year. Coming up on about twenty thousand miles. Yeah, and actually, uh, it's something to think about is in twenty thousand miles, we're not full timers, part timers. I like to call us any timers. Whatever. Have a timers, good timers, whatever you want to say. But we just like to get out and enjoy bad Betty. And so, we do. You no, know, we, we do. Every moment that we get that's outside of the things that we do normal with our job and our family, we capture it if it's one or two days. So. Again, 
We hope that the tour was helpful. Uh, we're gonna be doing some mods here in the near future, and I was talking earlier about that we're gonna have an online store. I've got some cabinetry upgrades and some different things that we're gonna introduce. And we also have some other videos coming in shortly that I I'll think are gonna help with the out, out, Yeah, we'll do an outdoor tour again. We'll kind of go through that. But again, I think what we're gonna to continue to do is just not do every little step. We're just gonna talk about what's it, what's been our experience over yeah. the last year. Yeah. How we're feeling about it, what's working for us, what's not. And I think that's important to think about. In our trade, we, we're in the construction trade, we often tell our clients, we say, listen, live in your space for a little while, get acclimated to your home or the environment that you're trying to create and then think what speaks to you. And that's why we've kept a lot of the interior mods very basic. We knew we wanted the exterior mods. We wanted the Van Compass lift. We wanted the Freedom Van Gogh Raptor Grill. I like to call it the Raptor Grill. We wanted the Baja Those Design Lights, sure LP6s. Really and of course, we wanted the Mad Max, I call it the well, Mad Max, front recovery CA2 bumper with the cool Warren wrench yeah. and uh, the Falcon tires, et cetera, et cetera. So again, cheers. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Cheers. And I hope you enjoyed the video and cheers to you. We're yeah. gonna join some uh, friends down here on the beach.